How do you find and how do you make your club produce the best Nugents in the game? On today's show, I'm going to share with you a simulation that I ran with Leeds where we produce golden generation after golden generation. Yes, it is possible to do that in the game. And if you want to find out how, stick around. <music> My name, my name, my name is Daljit. Welcome to the show. Developing youth talent is certainly a big feature of the game of Football Manager. In fact, it's one of my favorite things to do. I love to look at my academy players, develop them, groom them into a Champions League winning squad. I'm sure that many of you feel the same way. And on today's show, my plan is this. I'm going to break it up into three parts. The first part, I'm going to look at academy development. How can you get golden generations to appear in the game season after season? Yes, I'm going to break that down and share how I do that on today's show. The second part of the show, I'm going to show you how I can supplement the academy with an effective scouting strategy using something uh, called custom screen flow, something that I've been doing since FM18. I shared it with you many, many times. But this time, I'm going to add something to it. I'm going to add advanced filters as well. And I'm going to show you how I go out there, set up my screen so that I can very quickly identify players I need to add to my academy. Finally, a strategy. Yes. Nothing works in this world without a strategy. All right. So you all, we also need a strategy to develop these players. What is the plan? How do you develop these players and, you know, turn them into your Champions League material that you need? Yes. I will exp along the way, I hope to explain progression factor, progression score, two elements of development that are intrinsic to FM Football Manager. Well, this is my approach to finding golden generations in the game. I'm sure a lot of you out there have your own approaches too, and I'm very interested to find out whether you've been able to achieve golden generation after golden generation after golden generation in your clubs. Please share your thoughts in the comments below. Now, what are Nugents? Well, Nugents... They are players that are populated into the game to replace older players that might have retired. The game tries to balance the game well as much as possible. And while there have been some concerns that the current version of Football Manager, it, it's a bit unbalanced. And SI are trying to address that with a patch. And I'm sure it's going to appear um, in the, what do we call this now? Jerry patch? Winter patch? March patch? I don't know, man. Seriously. <laughs> COVID has certainly spun a new way of doing things. And yes, when the patch comes, that's the best way of doing it. So when do these Nugents appear? Like the patch. They appear at different times in the game. Um, it depends on the country you're in, the league that you're in. Um, in England, for example, your head of youth development will come to you in December with a preliminary report giving you a basic summary of the kind of players that are going to be popping up in your academy in March. So that's England. Different leagues, different stories. Now, if, if you wanted to find out what um, the dates are, you can go to World, choose your region. In this case, let's take Europe, for example. Transfers, youth intake. Each club from that region will be listed and you can also filter them by countries. From the moment you start, you're safe. The game is already beginning to churn out these Nugents. They are all invisible at first, so you can't see them in your team. However, you can influence the kind of Nugents that pop up. It's easier when you're a big club with a big reputation. You attract the best Nugents if you have the correct infrastructure in place. This infrastructure includes youth facilities, youth recruitment, youth coaching, head of youth development and the director of football. Your club reputation, league reputation and nation also influence the generation of these Nugents. These are all the factors that can affect the quality of Nugents appearing in your club. This time around, I wanted to do something slightly different. I wanted to see the impact of personalities. Because I've always believed that personalities play a big part. And I decided to go to Leeds United and try and experiment with Leeds. I mean, after all, this isn't the most reputable club in England, right? And they are not at the top. They are, in fact, a relegation candidate. So you won't find the best Nugents arriving at this club. I went in there, went to all the youth coaches, turned them into model professionals. Then I went to the head of youth development, turned him into a model professional, did the same to the director of football, sat down in my chair and decided to go on a holiday. Yes, all great managers should know when to go for a holiday. So I went on a holiday all the way to December, waited for the head of youth development to come into my office and he did with a report. We have a golden generation. 
pleased with my progress, I decided to go on a holiday again, all the way to March. Picked up the cohort and left them in the youth, uh, youth team. And I decided to go on holiday again. Repeated the process for another season. And I picked up another golden generation. Now there's two golden generations in a row. Now, I didn't go out there and uh, get the best coaches, so to speak, in terms of attributes. I'm sure that if I had done that, then perhaps the results would have been even better. Well, all I wanted was that report from the head of youth development that says golden generation. Don't blame me. I take joy from the small things in life. When I look at the both the reports, I'm, they, they look okay. I mean, like you got two groups here, decent personalities um, and a good mix of uh, potential. And I was pretty happy with the crop that I got. Of course, this is just after two seasons. And uh, well, personalities aren't the only factor that lead to good youth development because that's going to be the next stage. Getting this cohort and then they're now visible. So they'll be affected by your training facilities. They'll be affected by your training programs. So now things are in your hands to develop them. And I think that sometimes people focus a bit too much on personalities when in reality it's a combination of personality, ambition and determination that play a part along with other things like progression score, progression factor. These are all the things that will, you know, influence the development of your place. I plan to explain progression score and progression factor a bit later. I've done it before in the training video, but I'll cover it again on this video very, very soon. So we set the stage for our production factory. Hopefully they churn out some great players in the near future. We've got a director of football. Now, this guy is going to affect the outliers, the five-star phenomenals and the five-star darts. Of course, this doesn't happen every single day, so it's a bit rare. The second step is now to set up in place a plan to bring in more players. Now, we have to go out there and set up a scouting system. I, I call this my super scouting system where I look specifically for hot young talent. What we do here is we use a tool I introduced you to in FM17 called Custom Screen Flow. So go to Preferences, type in Custom, and you should see Custom Screen Flow. Leave everything on default, now pick your competitions. I would recommend the under-18 and under-23 professional development leagues. To be honest, so long as the nations are playable, you should have this information, even from the world screen, but there are too many steps to click to get to that. So this one is a bit more efficient. You can go to a competition when the news pops up, and you can drill into the data to find players who make good candidates for your youth team. For strikers, I would recommend shots on target percentage because this means that a player has a good ratio of hitting the target. For ex Here, for example, we have a striker who has a pretty decent percentage and would be a good candidate for the club. You can also look at metrics like conversion rate and shots per 90 as good yardsticks to identify potential strikers. For playmakers, I almost exclusively look at key passes per 90. Any player who has a number higher than one is almost always a candidate for further scouting. Metrics like clear-cut chances created can also help you identify potential targets. If I wanted to look for fullbacks or any players with good footballing intelligence, the first thing I look for is interceptions made because this never fails in identifying good players. You always want a player who can read the play and react to it instead of a player who is, you know, having to physically react to it by committing a tackle. I then add this to my short list of potential candidates. My scouts are also given specific responsibilities to identify potentially good young players with the use of filters. I have two scouts set to permanent youth identification. The filters are aggressive. Players below 17 with good natural fitness and determination to weed out all the players who can't perform after 45 minutes and scouted potential of very good. With this setup, I get flooded with fantastic new gen prospects. The only thing that will bury your ambitions will be greed. So don't sign too many because the next step is actually developing them. Over the course of time, a player can progress at a certain rate. This is called progression score. This is affected by playing time, personality, ambition, determination, facilities, morale, quality of coaches and quality of playing time. This combines to give us a potential progression score. How much it develops depends on progression factor where luck actually plays a part. So think of it as rolling a dice. You've got all the facilities, you've done everything. You're top of the table, you're winning every single game. And sometimes your players don't even develop. Why? It can happen. It can happen because you're overplaying the player. It can happen because you're not giving him enough time to train with the rest of his teammates. So you got to balance things out. First, you got to be consistent in selection. You got to give him a chance to play, but you can't play him all the time for 90 minutes with the main team. He's, you've got to give him time to go and train. So you've got to be balanced with this. And the other thing about 
um, progression factor is this. It depends on, um, it, it's a cycle. You know, he does well in games, then he does well in training, then he does well in games and he does well in training. So it's a, it keeps going around and around. So you, you want to make sure that this circle is never broken. So what you've got to do is, you also need to use the right kind of shouts in games when he's playing. You want to encourage the youngsters. Um, you want to give them a bit of encouragement when they're playing the game. You don't want to overplay them. That's the danger I see. Uh, it, it, it's so tempting, right? If I have a player called Joey at Kasim Pasha. And his name is really not Joey, but we gave him a name, Joey. And he's like a five-star player that we signed at a, in a one-star team. And uh, he's 17 years old. And I have to play him every single game because he's the best player we've got. But I've got to be very careful with him as well because if I overplay him, he's not going to develop. So this is the thing about progression factor. The moment a player gets jaded, the progression factor kicks in because then you you might get, um, you know, instead of uh, developing, the guy retards in development. So sometimes you see attributes dropping a lot. Like, you know, it's all of a sudden he went green arrows all the way and he just went red arrows. This can happen. This is where progression factor is kicking in. Player development takes a bit of planning and a bit of luck. So if you can keep consistent results going, then all you got to do is make sure that you have the right training program. And I have covered this in a show recently where I spoke about my one training schedule to rule all of them. It's a simple approach to for me in the game of football manager. Uh, once my team has reached tactical familiarity, they just the, the entire team just goes to one training schedule, right? But what about the youth team? Well, the youth team also have their one training schedule to rule them all. I don't even bother with tactical familiarity with the youth team. All I do is um, after preseason is done, they move on to that one training schedule to rule them all. And they stick with it for the entire season. Individual players are assigned individual role training so that I make sure that they are developing in the right direction. This way, I get to control the kind of attributes I want to see developed in my team. My Sporting Portugal save, which is basically a training and development save, well, an update on that is coming very soon. Very interesting results there as well. And I want to encourage all of you to keep your comments flowing. Let me know how your mentoring, how your training, how your golden generation is coming along. I'm very interested to know how often you get hit with a golden generation and whether or not my little tips have helped you out in the show. If you have any further questions, you guys can always drop me a comment below and you can look me up on Twitter at BusterNet. Once again, I want to thank everybody for the continued support of this channel. You make these kind of shows really enjoyable to do. I love doing them and I hope to hear from all of you very, very soon. You guys stay safe, take care. I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.